Ladies and gentlemen, people have been really, really bugging me to cover SCP-001, The Black Moon. Apparently, The Black Moon over here, it covers all sorts of things, like uh, the, the foundation, how it started. It's an SCP-001, which is always cool. I'm excited. What can I say? This, this is a good one. I keep getting told that this is like a, a real banger. All right, let's see what we got. Let's see if it's truly worth the hype. Does the black moon howl? No, what? not yet. What? See the boy. He was born in a time before <laughs> names. There weren't enough humans around to need them back then. Wait, huh? The black moon has such a rich history? He was one of a handful occupying a coastal village, using a tongue long since dead. They eked out a simple life, hunting, gathering, fishing. The only thing on most of their minds was surviving to see the next sunrise. Okay. Yes, a simple life, free of complications. Un okay, I feel like there are about to be a lot of complications. What the fuck? Until the hermit appeared. The hermit! Okay, dude. Okay, dude, what is this? Is this some history of humanity garbage? There's no way the dark... The Black Moon SCP is that deep that we have to go this far back in time. This feels like those essay channels that are like, Yes, before covering this PewDiePie controversy, first, let me tell you about Adolf Hitler, commander of the Third Reich. The boy would remember this man for eternity. Haggard and thin, skin weathered by time and pain. A man that, emaciated, walking with a long, gnarled cane that honestly looked healthier than he did, shouldn't be alive. Even the boy, who had scarcely seen beyond the bounds of his village, knew that the hermit was unnatural, an aberration. Are all the historical anomalies, like, you know, all the, the magical type things that have happened throughout history that we don't have an explanation for, are they just anomalies in the SCP universe? An anomaly. He walked into the center of the village, sat down on a large stone, and waited. Nobody dared ask his business, nor what the hermit waited for. Then I have come long and far to touch grass, child. Then, a few days later, the black moon howled. Okay, what the fuck is going on? My butt cheeks are clenched right now. The boy saw the village's youngest hunter freeze one evening while out on a walk. Not simply stand still, but freeze. Then, for an instant, he became solid black. A coal stack. Whoa! Whoa! Police, don't shoot. This man is black. And as soon as he'd changed, he was gone. Obliterated. Wait. Not a trace of him remained. Such is the power of the black moon. It can make any conscious being disappear in an instant. Turn black, then wiped from our plane of existence, never to be seen again. Oh my god, and it just does this randomly? Is it itself? Is it alive? Like, is it conscious? Does it know what it's doing? Or is it just, oh, every once in a while, uh, you get Majora masked. Uh, yo, did you just get Majora's masked? Oh, sorry about that, homie. It just, you know, it's a thing. Its choice of victims seemed, at each instance, to be utterly random. But it would come for all who lived eventually. Wait, it's just... For all who lived, is this just a demise that eventually befits everyone? Are you si That's scary as hell. Wait, so what changed between then and now? It's just erase. Everyone knows that at some point they're going to be erased from existence. They're just going to get Thanos. This is known to some as the howling of the Black Moon. Later that same night, the boy found himself talking to the hermit who asked with small, frantic eyes. I love how they said just before this is like, oh yes, this is before language existed. Anyway, the boy was talking to the hermit. He had seen. When the boy told him, he let out a deep, rattling sigh. The boy, curious, asked him if he knew about the nightmare he'd just witnessed. The hermit looked up. He'd been the first one in the hermit's millennia of pursuit that had ever asked. In that moment, okay. he knew that he had found his successor in the hunt for the death of ages. Huh? The hermit told the boy it went by many names. The Great Finale, the Pale King, but most common of all was the Black Moon. Why would it be called the Pale King? It sounds like it's coming from a racist place. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. The entity existed beyond the veil of our reality, a creature of pure energy though nobody could really be sure of its true nature. Wait, so this is like the Scarlet King with extra steps. I feel like there has to be some sort of theory that the Scarlet King is just the Black Moon. The Hermit had been tracking it, learning about it, 
and trying to destroy it for thousands of years. What? And yet it only took him four pathetic minutes to tell the boy everything he knew. The boy- Dude, imagine living a life thousands of years long, chasing some sort of Eldritchian entity. You only have four- you could tell over your whole life story in four minutes. There's some sort of entity that's killing people. He learned nothing. Man learned nothing. Just give up. Knowing still that something about the hermit was unnatural, asked how he came to be in this position. Like the Black Moon never claimed him somehow? Hermit told the boy he was the counterbalance, a kind of chosen one destined to face and perhaps even defeat the Black Moon someday. The counterbalance receives a number of truly extraordinary gifts for inheriting the responsibility. Eternal life, eternal youth, near f Eternal youth? Physical immortality. But they will be haunted by their purpose, doomed to watch everyone they love die around them. No, don't tell me this guy, this hermit dude, ends up becoming a member of the Foundation trying to track down this moon. Wait a second, what if this is the reason why the Foundation started? What if he started the entire Foundation? As they continue to hunt their only true equal and opposite, the Black Moon itself. <laughs> the stupid moon. Alf. The hermit in his own eyes had failed at his duty. He had grown weary and now he needed to pass the duty of counterbalance on to another. That other would be the boy. Oh he felt a God. sudden and profound change, along with the knowledge that nothing would ever be the same. Did you just casually give some kid that he spoke to for four minutes immortality and uh, his lifelong quest? Again, he was no longer just the boy. Now, he was the counterbalance. He watched the hermit give him a slight nod of respect, and then crumble into dust before his eyes. Oh my god, bro! This is just the plot of Shazam all over again! Oh my god, he sees some little child and he's like, Child, come closer! I will give you it eternal youth, immortality, and I will now die. Good luck, bye-bye. The boy, the counterbalance, looked up at the sky and saw the stars twinkling, so bright and so beautiful. Little did he know his battle with the Black Moon would outlast every single one of them. Oh my god, that's crazy! Battle with the Dark Moon would outlast the stars? Does the Black Moon howl? Not without blood. The boy grew into a man as his village aged and then died around him. Decades passed, then centuries, then millennia. Tens of thousands of years watching humanity develop and grow around him as he continued his pursuit of that one elusive foe. As science and diagnostic technology gained Dude, and he starts the foundation, doesn't he? Shit, that's crazy. Absorbing and then evolving beyond all the- Dude got the bean quest from freaking Adventure Time. <laughs> he just has to watch the beans. Don't plant the beans! Old superstitions. The counterbalance gained a better understanding of the Black Moon. Though even then, it still remained essentially though? a stranger. Like, what did he get? The entity was entropic. A being of pure randomness and chaos without consistent form. That is so not helpful! It didn't exist in our universe, but it could exercise its influence here with so-called obliteration events, much like the horrible fate that befell the young hunter from the village. But that was only the proverbial tip of the iceberg. The counterbalance tracked and noted obliteration events. They were exceedingly rare at first, Something that occurred once every thousand years or so, like a terrible curse. But he couldn't help but notice a concerning trend emerging. Dude, if finding any form of trend in what the Black Moon is doing goes against everything we think we know about it. Finding a trend proves that it's not chaos. Proving it not being chaos would be the biggest possible step to actually figuring anything out about it. While it's chaos, it's... It's predictably unpredictable. That's wild. It started happening once a century, then once a decade. He could feel the terrible future stretching out in front of him. How, over their shared eternity, the Black Moon would gain more and more ground. Would there come a day where it took someone once a year, once a month, a week, a day, an hour, a minute, a second? It'd spell the end of all conscious life. A Dude, that's insane! Total victory for the Black Moon. What is its goal here? Like, again, we, as far as we know, it's not conscious. It's just some sort of unconscious entity, like a, some sort of disease. End of the universe, the death of ages. 
a complete existential obliteration. That's what we're heading toward, right? So it's like an infinite reality that um, this black moon has with this this other guy, right? They just have an existent, a future existence where the black moon slowly but surely wipes out all of consciousness and all of conscious life. He was swept up in a sobering realization. He couldn't win this fight alone. However, while his hunt for the black moon had been largely fruitless, the counterbalance had discovered many other things along the way. Strange creatures, objects with extraordinary powers, and events that couldn't be explained with rational science. Bro, bro started discovering anomalies. Science. Perhaps something about these oddities, these anomalies, would hold the key to defeating oh his God. timeless enemy. He didn't! He started the foundation. He didn't build the foundation to contain the black moon. He built the foundation to find an anomaly he can use to destroy it. All this containing shit that he's been doing for all these years, containing anomalies, has just been a, a incredibly tiny, infinitesimal part of the plan of finding an anomaly that could stop the black moon. Because that's the ultimate goal. He doesn't give a shit about if, if the reptile is in prison or if the reptile is killing random people. He doesn't care if the shy guy is just on some mountain somewhere killing tourists. He just wants to find something that could stop the black moon. And it hadn't just That's been- That's a mind-blowing origin story! Oh my god! And these objects- What a twist! ...entities and events. He'd also discovered some truly exceptional people on his travels. Minds and skills that rivaled even his own, despite his age. Perhaps they would be the ones to help him win. With the 13 most brilliant and trusted people the counterbalance ever met, he decided to form a council. And from this council, they forged and directed an organization Dude. dedicated to understanding and pre watched, pre watched, and counteracting the strange in all its forms. That's insane. What an awesome origin story. Holy crap. What a great freaking story and plotline. With the secret how it started end the black boom before human extinction how it's going infinite ikea go brrr. <laughs> hope that their search into darkness would <laughs> yield the answer to the black moon's downfall he called it the scp foundation they would secure the anomalous contain it and protect all of humanity from its influence the counterbalance also took on a new title the fitting of his new role the administrator and even Crazy. the Black Moon itself was given a moniker in hopes of robbing it of some of its frightening power. SCP-001. Dude, the 001s are all so good. They are so good. This is the third 001 I'm looking into. I've done the uh, Scarlet King. I've done the When Day Breaks. Now I'm doing Black Moon. Dude, freaking great. Does the Black Moon howl only at the blind? The year was now 1987. The SCP Foundation had been operating for over a century, and thanks to their secret possession of anomalous wisdom and technology, their own advancement was thousands of years ahead of the rest of humanity. So the SCP, does it work with the government? I mean, it's obviously not controlled by the government. Some sort of private, uh, private fund over here. Well, there still wasn't a silver bullet solution to the Black Moon, and its deadly howls were becoming all the more frequent as the decades went on. The Foundation did have some irons in the fire to combat it. Their ability to okay. gather intel on both the entity itself and its obliteration events had improved considerably, thanks to their new global information network. Due to the power of furries on the internet, they are able to find out so much about the Black Moon. Their top minds were also working on a highly classified device known as the Singular Conceptual Bunker which may one day come in handy for combating the extra-dimensional entity directly. The issue is you never know if it's working. Because if the Black Moon is completely random, you could sit in your freaking temporal bunker all you want, and you just don't know if you were randomly chosen and protected. There is no possible way to actually know that you stopped the Black Moon. That's so scary. There's no way to actually know that. But the most valuable piece of information they ever gathered about the Black Moon was this. It couldn't howl when it was being watched. This is just a weeping angel! The very act of engaged observation defanged it. That's so interesting, right? Because, um, again, that, that is the power of consciousness. Whoever wrote The Black Moon 
is a fucking legend. So, uh, you know Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, I, I presume, right? Everyone here studied quantum physics like me. But uh, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is as follows, that as long as there is a conscious mind that is uh, observing something, that is what brings it into existence. For example, Schrodinger's cat theory, the cat is in both a state. You put a cat in a room with no observer and two buttons. One button, the cat lives. One button, the cat dies. Pushes a button, you don't know which button it pushed. Right now, the cat is in both a state of alive and dead until a conscious observer looks into the room, sees if the cat's alive or dead, and then boom, it collapses the wave function of reality bringing the cat into a state of either life or death. It's the conscious observer that creates reality. So maybe the reason why uh, you have the black moon destroying and erasing people's conscious minds from existence is because they are the only thing that creates a reality aside from some sort of God. They take away the agency of someone like, some entity like the black moon so the black moon is going after conscious minds but as long as a conscious mind is looking at the moon it is literally taking away the moon's power that is so cool i'm sorry i'm sorry how can you observe something that doesn't technically exist inside your own reality in order to pull this off the foundation would need to get extremely creative thankfully creative solutions to strange problems are the foundation's specialty flash forward to 1993 okay. enter dr moto a brilliant young scientist and conceptual engineer working for the SCP Foundation. With the administrator's consultation, he started the Key Project, an arm of the wider Project Oromasides, <laughs> the umbrella initiative for using modified anomalous objects in the battle against the Black Moon. The goal of the yes, utilize those anomalies. Key Project was relatively simple. If people couldn't observe the Black Moon directly, then the Foundation could make proxies of the Black Moon that could be observed almost like a kind of voodoo doll. Voodoo doll? Twitter canceled this man, they just said voodoo. They just used a closed religion for their own purposes like that. These new anomalies would only need to satisfy three criteria. The inability to operate when being observed, a hostility to conscious life, and the ability to end conscious life of their own volition when not being observed. Through conceptual engineering, a link theoretically could be forged between these objects and the black moon allowing observation of them to stop the obliteration events. However, despite being a good idea in theory, Dr. Moto's okay. efforts were marred with errors and tragedies. One object- Oh my god, dude. It's like, hey, this'll probably work. Proceeds to not work and people now die because of you. Listen, listen, we've all made mistakes. It wasn't deadly enough, simply appearing behind people in a threatening pose when they weren't looking. Another one killed purely what? through collateral damage. A giant sculpture of a human head that immediately attempted escape by barging through Site-01, the center for anti-Black Moon operations, and killing 19 people in the process. Oh, Another God. one of Moto's objects, a huge black sphere, simply immediately exploded, killing 12 people. Oh my God! You have any idea how many people they killed? They killed more people than the Black Moon killed. All right, <laughs> just trying to figure out a way to stop it. And in the most horrific misstep of all, one of Moto's objects caused a mass death event in a nearby hotel, where 142 people were spontaneously incinerated when the object, a series of interlocking stalactites and stalagmites, were left unobserved for 0.2 seconds. Dude, that's awful. Like, how is that acceptable? H how is it acceptable or... I mean, I guess, listen, that's what the SCP Foundation's all about. They, their morals do not operate on the same level as theirs. In, in, the, in the mind of this administrator guy, every single step taken to destroy the Black Moon is worth it. Almost all of Moto's objects were terminated in the aftermath, either being too useless or too dangerous to keep around. The young scientist felt a deep shame, but forged on. He made one truly brilliant creation that satisfied all the criteria, a sculpture. Oh! my god he created scp-173 as like a de facto mini black moon so that they if they could find a way to consistently observe the sculpture they could find a way to stop the black moon too how iconic that the sculpture is the first scp incapable of moving while being watched but would snap the neck of the nearest conscious entity if it left unobserved for even a fraction of a second its relatively minimal killing left it easy to contain without causing mass deaths and despite all the other deaths that had sadly occurred during the key project, Dr. Moto believed that the lives saved in Moto Moto likes you. the long run by stopping the Black Moon's howls would justify the sacrifice. 
The problem is, the key project didn't stop anything. Not long after this, there was the first recorded double obliteration event in Rome, where a young tourist couple had both been obliterated simultaneously. That is so bad, because th the fact, if that is random, that is, the chances are so astronomically low. All the deaths in the key project had been for nothing. The Black Moon was only getting more powerful. The shame and the guilt was too much. And now they have this stupid SCP-173, this indestructible sculpture that snaps the neck of anything that doesn't look at it. Even the lizard, the immortal reptile, is scared of SCP-173. SCP For Dr. Moto, he left a note in his office reading, We've been looking at nothing. I'm sorry, Administrator. I failed you, sir. Moto's corpse was later found in the sculpture's temporary- Oh my god, he went to kill- he went to the sculpture to kill himself. And all those hundreds of people that died because of him proved nothing because the Black Moon wasn't stopped. The containment chamber, his neck snapped. The key project was, in summary, shut down, and its one surviving creation transported to Site-19 in late 1993, where it was designated as SCP-173. Another painful failure for the administrator. Back to the drawing board once more. Dude, that is crazy. What a rich story, the Black Moon story. I, I love it. Does the Black Moon howl? Not while the stars shine. Millennia stretched on. Almost everyone died except the administrator thanks to his gift. Or perhaps curse. As the counterbalance to the Black Moon. Science marched on. The SCP Foundation marched on. But all this progress, all this power, was nothing against the incomprehensible influence of SCP-001. The Black Moon was howling more frequently than ever, all the way up to the year 3156. Wait, what? This story stretches a thousand years into the future of the SCP Foundation? When the Foundation launched the Seek Project. Yeah, the Foundation still didn't collapse, that's insane. Under the support of Project Oromastes, as more and more people were wiped out in frequent obliteration events, the administrator became don't shoot this man is black painfully aware that perhaps the answers to the black moon problem wouldn't be found on earth using state-of-the-art technology with a little help from the anomalous the scp foundation began work on an autonomous spacefaring vessel that could search the stars for the key to the black moon's destruction Dude. it was an awe-inspiring creation a huge craft powered by artificial intelligence with a universal translator cryogenic units and hundreds of autonomous drones to perform more targeted searches. Chat GBT, the only way to destroy the Black Moon! Seek was waved off into the unforgiving depths of space. The administrator could only hope that it would come back with worthwhile answers. The first of the three notable planets Seek derived on was one theoretically capable of supporting human life, except for its brutal and constant blizzards and snowstorms. When Seek's drones were deployed, signs of civilization, based around sentient spherical creatures, but no signs of actual life remained. Records and statues found across the planet seem to indicate that the Black Moon was responsible for the destruction of the planet's civilization, causing- Wait, this is a planet that can have human life, and they go, and they find out that there was life, only that the Black Moon wasn't stopped here, and it just erased every piece of conscious life. Thing so many obliteration events that the remaining survivors went mad from the fear and stress leading to mass death in the ensuing chaos. The next planet was discovered centuries later, in the year 3499. While this planet could also theoretically support human life, it suffered from frequent volcanic eruptions that rendered much of its surface a flaming mass. However, there were still the dormant ruins of a once advanced civilization of conscious beings. Oh my God. Much like the prior planet, they'd been driven extinct by black moon obliteration events a century before the seek even arrived Dude. unlike the last planet however it seems that they accepted their fate and went gently into the night the planet was now overrun by billions of armored bat-like creatures that operated on pure instinct and thus were not considered conscious enough to be obliterated the final planet was reached in 3764 okay. and was the most fruitful of the three discoveries. Let's go. This planet was hyper advanced, fully urbanized, and covered in sprawling megacities, with records and technology over a thousand years ahead of Earth. Before the Black Moon killed almost all of them, they're mushroom people! There were a species of humanoid telepathic fungi and had developed an awareness of the Black Moon's existence that was on par with that of humanity's. Yo! Okay. They even had their own equivalent of- But it obviously didn't work. 
the SCP Foundation actively working on countermeasures. Oh, and God. most amazingly of all, but it didn't work. Seek found one surviving member of the species on the planet, cryogenically frozen. The craft was a I would think that they would freeze a lot more of themselves, right? Like you'd think, because you're not conscious while you're cryogenically frozen. You'd think that they would be like, at least hope somebody, somebody out there somewhere would stop the Black Moon. Immediately instructed to collect the survivor and return home for interrogation. The administrator was preparing for what could be the most important conversation since he met the hermit all those thousands of years ago. Shit, that's crazy. Oh, does the black moon howl only when waning? When the surviving creature, codenamed Sage, was returned to Earth, the administrator was eager to finally- Dude, I'm afraid the second they unfreeze this guy, he's just gonna insta-die. Like the rest of its now extinct species, Sage spoke through powerful telepathic mind waves, which only the administrator, thanks to his counterbalance abilities, was able to receive at close range without being harmed. Okay. Incidentally, it wasn't long until the very fact of the administrator's nature as a counterbalance came up in the mental conversation. Sage could tell, just by being in his presence. They discovered a number of vital truths over their brief time communicating, that Sage's survival had been pure luck, for starters. The Black Moon is still- Its survivor's been luck. Of course it's been luck, because the point of the moon is chaos. It is entropy. So there is no way to plan yourself surviving. Still very right? much capable of obliterating conscious beings in an unconscious state. The so there were others that were cryogenically frozen, but they just died too? The anything that had consciousness is a target here? So it's just luck that he survived. It's literally just luck. Administrator also learned that he was merely the latest in an extremely long line of counterbalances across time, space, and species. Though everyone but him had waived this duty, passed it on. Sage had one question to ask the administrator in turn. What is SCB? The singular conceptual bunker being worked on and- Okay, I was like, okay, dude, there's no way you're gonna just give the mushroom guy, the telepathic mushroom, an accent, but okay. Perfected for thousands of years by now, by the Foundation's top scientists and conceptual engineers. The administrator replied, Victory, but it will take a very, very long time. Specifically, so long that he would see the stars go out around him, one by one. It's a bunker meant to outlive life. Because the only time the Black Moon is actually gonna stop and die is when there's no more life to take. So they made a bunker to outlive life itself. Shocked, Sage asked him what good victory would do him then. Rather than say it aloud, he replied with a thought. Sage paused and said, I see, how blasphemous of you. Hopefully it works. After this, the administrator- Wait, it's not gonna tell us? It's not gonna tell us what he thought them? Oh my god. Proceeded to the singular conceptual bunker and entered it, leaving instructions for the foundation to be run by a newly formed O5 council in his indefinite absence. Thousands of years later, in the year 5011, Sage spoke one more time, repeating the words, hopefully, hopefully, before turning solid black and disappearing. The Black Moon had claimed one more victim, but billions more had gone in the interim. The administrator had no more answers to give, at least no more answers that anyone but him would understand. He was inside the singular conceptual bunker now, loaded into a device known as Tome, an experimental memorial module meant to pick up and record all the last messages of every dying civilization across the universe when the time Dude, at this point, does he even try- is he even getting more information, or did he completely give up on the ability to stop it before all life dies? Dude, this one is such a mindfuck. Oh my god. I, w I was so not ready for this. And finally came. All he could do was wait. And wait was exactly what we did. Dude, honestly, the, the freaking balls on this man. Dude, dude is so stubborn. He's willing to live a life in a bunker for millennia until all of life in the universe dies, because that's his purpose. Does the black moon howl? Yes, yes it does. Years pass, too many to count. It's a time after names now. And Tome sits- Oh my god, this went from a time before names to a time after names. In the very center, drinking in the end of the universe. The last of all the human colonies across the universe were obliterated by the Black Moon back in the year 7329. So, so, so long ago. But some of the final messages of fear, panic, and distress still echoed around in the administrator's mind. 
Hello? Is there anyone here? We require what? assistance. There's... It's it's taking people every day. Just all life. Okay, humans are already gone. Whatever. Skill issue. Skill issue. Humans are gone. Skill issue. It's not even is it not containable, but at some point there will be some sort of telepathic entity out there that is alive that has no chance against the Black Moon. We need help. There's barely anyone left. We need help. Hello? Hello? Cabal 0943, we have abandoned the false flesh. We have abandoned the false flesh. The shepherd's <laughs> crook broken neath my knee. Cabal 0943, Cabal 0943, forgive us! Forgive us! Dude, it's just different, different religions, different cultures all dying around him, and he's just forced to observe. We're going to leave this on. It's so dark outside now. It's blotted out the sun. It's... I have to go now. Respond. First convenience. Emergency. Situation developing. Require additional resources. This is the best SCP I've ever seen, for sure. My fault, your fault, our fault, my fault, your fault, our fault, my fault, your fault, our fault! Rip my brain out now, rip my brain out now! And a small child, the last on Earth simply asking, Hello? Into an indifferent microphone. But the administrator had to wait. It's not just an indifferent microphone. It's asking, saying hello to a world devoid of life. Imagine the last one just before being taken. This is like an existence of madness. How did this administrator guy not break? How is he so convicted to just live his life just for the purpose of outliving life itself? As the singular conceptual bunker became the solitary conceptual bunker. He was the last conscious being in the universe. Oh my god, dude has warrior mentality out the wazoo. This dude ain't donating to Twitch streamers, that's for sure. And still he needed to wait as the stars went dark outside. Only when there was nothing outside but black was it finally time for the counterbalance's long game to play off. There was no- What was the long game? What is it? Nothing left of our universe. The only thing here was the- yeah, how, how is the earth not blown up? How is he not frozen? How didn't- the, Once the sun dies- Okay, whatever. Let's not ask these questions! The SCB and the Black Moon itself. With everything else gone, the Black Moon only had one conscious being left to obliterate. It opened the door to the solitary conceptual bunker. Wait, the Black Moon opened the door? ...and stepped inside. This... This doesn't make sense. No, that doesn't make any sense at all! How can the Black Moon, an entity beyond our dimension, beyond physical form, take a step? Good question. Uh, the yeah. same question, incidentally, that was going through the Black Moon's mind as it entered the bunker. It didn't look at all how the entity expected. What? It was like a bar, a counter with rows of bottles be- I am so confused. I am literally so confused. Why does the- I didn't think the moon was conscious. I thought the whole point was the moon is not conscious, and it's erasing consciousness. Behind it, a jukebox playing in the corner. A man stood behind the bar cleaning the glasses. The counterbalance. The administrator. He said, <laughs> Well, there you are. Certainly took your time. Can I pour you a little something? This only served to increase the black moon's confusion. It had form here. Dark smoke compressed into a vaguely humanoid shape. It could- Steve from Minecraft. Speak. It could think. None of this made any sense. The being- But is this just singularity? Is this like the, the concept, like a, a pantheistic view of the universe? That once all of the universe is just compressed into one being, that becomes some sort of conscious god? Like, and only now that all of life is destroyed. Can it actually take this shape? Being that had just wiped out all conscious life and seen the very death of the universe was truly and utterly confused. The administrator just seemed to be enjoying himself, preparing for a confrontation hundreds of billions of years in the making. Oh my the singular God. conceptual bunker, or perhaps the singular containment bunker, was a truly ingenious creation. Okay, dude, we are getting to the twist. What is this? What is happening? What? What is this story? A place of pure ideas, where everything inside was on the same level. Here, there were no immortals. No gods, just ideas on the same level playing field. And it was time for the Black Moon's idea to come to an end. It was a trap, and the entire universe was the bait. Oh my fucking god, that is the craziest lore in the world. Without warning, the administrator pulled up a shotgun from underneath the table. <laughs>
Murka! Murka! And unleashed both barrels into the Black Moon's chest. The creature took the hit and fought back, dragging the administrator to the ground, beating him, strangling him. He could feel the light fading under the monster's relentless Wait, assault. Wait, what? Until he managed- He's just gonna get choked to death? ...to get his desperate hands on a glass ashtray. He beat the monster over the head with it until its grip loosened, and he was able to slide out. There, the killer of the universe was on the ground before him. He grabbed the monster, held it in place, and beat it to death. He oh my god. He was gravely injured by the battle, but the Black Moon was no more. Here in the singular conceptual bunker. It's a conceptual bunker. That's why they kept calling it a singular conceptual bunker. Because everything becomes a concept, becomes a state of mind. And the Black Moon's biggest flaw, as well as its greatest strength, was the fact that it was completely incorporeal. In a state where every state of mind just becomes just a simple equal mindset, this is the only place to end a universal destroyer. He had won. Bro, the administrator would be Goku. Administrator, no longer the counterbalance in the absence of the Black Moon, hobbled over to the jukebox, produced a single beautiful coin from his pocket. He pushed the coin into the slot, wheezed a pain breath, and said, The thing is, this place is only information. <laughs> There's nothing else out there. Not even matter. The universe closed its doors a long time ago. This place can go from information back to matter with just the press of a button. <laughs> Let's what? see what happens when we introduce something to Into nothing. nothing. He makes a big bang. Oh my god, that's the craziest story in the world! He waited hundreds of billions of years. He waited infinite time to reset the universe without the Black Moon. This is the ultimate story. Nothing. For a second it looks as though he might fall, but he doesn't. Instead, he slams the button on the jukebox, and with a relieved laugh says, Let there be light. And get it, get it. There was light. Now go check out SCP-001, which is the real 001, and SCP-001-EX. That was crazy. That was insane. I mean, this is a good uh, explanation for how there are multiple SCP-001s because this entire universe and all of time in this universe was just combating the Black Moon. Now you can have other SCP-001 proposals in a new universe. That story blew my mind. This was by far, bar none, the best SCP that I have seen so far. Like, dude, not even close. There is nothing that I've seen so far that is even close. That was nuts. I'm lit I literally have chills. Holy crap. Like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch. Stay weird, fam.